Welcome to the Scottish Rite Journal podcast, an audio excerpt of the Scottish Rite Journal. This week's article, Is Masonry a Secret Society? by Brother Jim Combs, 32nd Degree, and comes from the May-June 2018 edition of the Scottish Rite Journal. So let's state the obvious. We meet behind closed doors. We place a guard on the door. And we swear ourselves to secrecy. Now, all of these actions are the hallmark of a secret society. And there are penalties, albeit symbolic, for violations of these secrets. To question whether Masonry is a secret society is an exercise in futility, as all Masons have taken an oath to keep it a secret society. The first question being asked here is, what is that secret? Now, it is the question of the ages, the question that has been asked by every Mason when on his knees before an altar, surrounded by ancient symbols and by the light of true flames, he swears to keep that secret. You cannot answer the first question without answering the second question, and that is, is Masonry an esoteric organization? Now, we define esoteric as secret teachings for a small group within an inner circle and not arcane or occult information for a group of people. Each one of us has answered the question of the ages, not once, but thrice. We each and every one of us are seekers of light. Humbly on our knees, we have answered the question of what it is we seek by answering light. Voltaire, a mason and a contemporary of Benjamin Franklin, made a rather classic statement. What we find in books is like the fire in our hearths. We fetch it from our neighbors, we kindle it at our home, and we communicate it to others, and it becomes the property of all. Now, as Masons, what we find in Lodge is that fire that brought civilization to the world. And as Masons, we kindle it, we share it with our brethren, and it becomes the foundation of freedom. It is not a coincidence that those who chose freedom over tyranny were Masons. Presidents, kings, scientists, musicians, composers, astronauts, Plumbers, electricians, teachers, soldiers, and mailmen all have been seekers of light. Now, books are the carriers of free thought, the bastions of a free society, and without light, you cannot read. A society kept in the dark is a society that is imprisoned. Masons are the keepers of the light that allows a society to be free. Every brother has exposed himself to free thought, to free expression, and promises temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice. The great religions of the world promise light. As in Genesis, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The Koran 2435, Light upon light, God doth guide whom he will to his light. The Sikh Guru Nanik, God is the light of all light. And the Zohar, which illuminates the supreme heaven, is a light never ceasing. Now, as Masons, each of us have defined ourselves as seekers of light. Yet, have we truly asked ourselves what this means to us? Now, within the lodge, light was given to us, yet like light seen through a prism... There are different spectrums that each one of us may be affected by. I would postulate that masonry is the prism for those that seek light. Through masonry, we can divide the light into an understanding of the colors that we are seeking. Within our secret lodge, we can discuss freely the meaning of light, and therefore we are not only seekers of light, but bearers of light for the future. Now, Masons throughout the years have paid dearly for the goal of seeking light. The Catholic Church, Holland, Spain, Italy, and other European countries outlawed Masonry. 
From its inception, many Islamic countries have threatened death to all Masons. Communist countries, Nazi Germany, and other dictatorships quickly forbade Masonry under penalty of death. Totalitarian governments cannot coexist with men who seek the light of freedom, to use that light to expose those who lurk in the shadows and who would dim that light to keep men in darkness. Now, we meet in our secret lodges not only to protect ourselves from persecution, but to seek the light. Each of our degrees is a symbol of free thinking and brings us closer to illumination. Jean-Louis DiBiase, writing in Secrets and Practices of Freemasons, defined the illumination as a contemplation of the divine. In the first degree, we declare upon our honor that we seek to become Masons because of a desire and a knowledge to be of service to our fellow creatures, and that we will learn the principles of a correct and upright life. It is here in the Apron Lecture where we hear the first explanation of what is expected of a Freemason. In the second degree, we discuss the importance of geometry and how numberless worlds are around us, and that we, as Masons, are repositories of ancient knowledge passed from the instructive tongue to the attentive ear. It is here that we begin to understand the secrets of our society. In the third degree, We learn about the rebirth of life, and that one must pass through a curtain, a fog, almost a miasma of thought, in order to become a Master Mason. Now, if we listen closely, we'll hear the call, feel the pull on our souls to rise up as new men, one who is ready not only to seek the light, but also to understand what we see by that light. Use your critical thinking skills to understand that, yes, we are a secret society, an esoteric society of men who are the repositories of ages-old information. Each one of us is offered the opportunity to become a torchbearer of freedom for the future. As Albert Pike stated, The sovereignty of oneself over oneself is called liberty. A master mason has that sovereignty. I would leave you with the following statement by Brother Giovanni Casanova, writing in Paris, 1750. Those who become Freemasons only for the sake of finding out the secret of the order run a very great risk of growing old under the trowel without ever realizing their purpose. Yet there is a secret, but it is so invaluable that it has never been confided or whispered to anyone. Those who stop at the outward crust of things imagine that the secret consists in words and signs, or that the main point of it is to be found only in reaching the highest degree. This is a mistaken view. The man who guesses the secret of Freemasonry, and to know it, you must guess it, reaches that point only through long attendance in the lodges, through deep thinking, comparison, and deduction. He would not trust that secret to his best friend in Freemasonry, because he is aware that if his friend has not found it out, he could not make any use of it after it had been whispered in his ear. No, he keeps his peace, and the secret remains a secret. Any citations accompanying photographs for this article can be found. Take two on the close. Any citations and accompanying photographs for this article can be found in the May-June 2018 issue of the Scottish Rite Journal. Don't forget, you can read the Scottish Rite Journal anytime by downloading the Scottish Rite Journal app. Free now in your app store. The Scottish Rite Journal is published by the Supreme Council, Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction. Illustrious S. Brent Morris, 33rd Degree, Editor-in-Chief. 
Copyright 2019. All rights reserved. I'm your host, Bob Chase, 33rd Degree. Thanks for listening. Want to do the close one more time. That'll be uh, take three. Any citations and accompanying photographs for this article can be found in the May-June 2018 issue of the Scottish Rite Journal. Now, don't forget, you can read the Scottish Rite Journal anytime by downloading the Scottish Rite Journal app, free now in your app store. The Scottish Rite Journal is published by the Supreme Council, Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction. Illustrious S. Brent Morris, 33rd Degree, Editor-in-Chief, Copyright 2019. All rights reserved. I'm your host, Bob Chase, 33rd Degree. Thanks for listening.